Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. In the meshless name of Yahoshua Mashiach, this is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just a voice crying in this wilderness. I'm just Yahweh's, one of Yahweh's few witnesses today, amen, on this earth. The Bible says this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. It, scripture didn't say that they would take heed or, or receive it. It said it would be a witness against them, ladies and gentlemen, on the day of judgment. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul said, woe unto me if I preach not the gospel of our master, Yahoshua Mashiach. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has come out of her, my people. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, with your host, Reginald M. Graham. And we greet you once again in the name of Yahoshua Mashiach. And I want to um, let all our listeners know that we're on YouTube. And we want you to go to our YouTube channel. And we want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, you have that information on my page. You can go and get that information. And we want you to go to our YouTube channel and subscribe, ladies and gentlemen, to our YouTube. These messages that I preach and minister, amen, daily, we, you can find them on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. And we thank Yahweh for that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, we're going to dive right into this message this evening. Once again, we're delighted to be able to come to you once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. Ladies and gentlemen, I have lived on this earth long enough to witness the change in attitude and behavior of believers. I surrendered my life to Yahweh in the early 80s, 1982 to be exact. People in the 80s had a zeal for Yahweh. They were enthused, amen, for the, uh, about the things of Yahweh. They were um, interested in the word of Yahweh. Believers were enthused and had an interest for the word of Yahweh, but things began to change in the late 80s. Things began to go down the toilet, ladies and gentlemen. Church attendance began to fall off and I attributed it to decadence and debauchery in the culture. The culture in the U.S. began to erode, ladies and gentlemen. It began to deteriorate in the 80s. Television, the movie industry, the music uh, industry, entertainment industry, and fashion began to intensify in sexual and sensual undertones. Television sitcoms, themes increased drastically, explicitly in erotic and sexual images. Women clothing begin uh, to become more explicit, enticing, and seductive. The movie industry increased more graphically in sex, crime, violence, and horror. The music industry became more graphic, profane, and explicit in sexual undertones and violence. Fashions became extremely immodest, seductive, and enticing, bearing more flesh. Clothing became more shorter and tighter. Entertainment increased a thousandfold. Pastor sermons became more watered down and diluted. You heard less sermons on holiness and repentance. Believers began conforming to the world. Ladies and gentlemen, churches lowered their standards extremely. Gospel music sounded more like R&B's pop and rock. By the time the 90s came around, the whole landscape of the church world had changed. I could not recognize it 
anymore. Now I'm sitting back. Yahweh uh, delivered me in the early 80s, ladies and gentlemen. I surrendered my life to Yahweh in the early 80s. And I'm sitting back and I'm observing all these things that's going on, ladies and gentlemen. I, I've been on this earth long enough to witness, amen, the degeneration, degradation, the apostasy, ladies and gentlemen, in our church, in the church world today. Gospel music sounded more like R&Bs, pop and rock. By the time the 90s came around, the whole landscape of, of the church world had changed. I could not recognize it anymore, ladies and gentlemen. Then when the internet was introduced, everything went to hell. Let me say that again. Then when the internet, internet was introduced, everything went to hell. An increase of pledges have done havoc on believers today. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 3 and 4 that in the end times that men will be lovers of pledges more than lovers of Elohim. Isn't that the truth, ladies and gentlemen? Wasn't Apostle Paul a man precise, ladies and gentlemen, and accurate with his prophecy? In the end times, ladies and gentlemen, men will be lovers of pledges more than lovers of Elohim. The 90s were a time of extreme apostasy. Everything went to hell in the 90s. Now, I'm, I was sitting back and I'm observing all of these things. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3 declares, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. That's apostasy. Ladies and gentlemen, you, you look at uh, Christianity, the church world. Uh, some of you young, you, 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 you didn't have the opportunity like me to witness these things, ladies and gentlemen. But you've seen the attitude and the behavior of people change drastically. Things begin to go down the toilet, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, um, People, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just begin to go back on their standards. They begin to go back on things they once believed. Women used to have a standard of holiness and the way they dress, ladies and gentlemen. But things begin to erode and deteriorate, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen. When the 2000s came around, all of hell was unleashed on this world. Hell opened up and every demon in it regurgitated on this earth, ladies and gentlemen. The invention of social media was the final nail in the majority of believers coffin. I got to say that again. You don't, cause you don't hear much uh, uh, ministered about the ills and the evils of social media, man. Social media is evil, ladies and gentlemen. When well, somebody say, well, why are you on social media? The only reason I'm on social media is ministry. If it wasn't for ministry, I will not have social media in my possession, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the invention of sodium, uh, social media was the final nail in the majority of believers' coffin. The final nail, ladies and gentlemen. Social media has gone through a metamorphosis for the worse. Every day it gets more explicit, more profane, more graphic. Satan has mm -hmm. util utilized social media to destroy many, ladies and gentlemen. The mighty are falling. Social media has caused the mighty to fall, ladies and gentlemen. Social media is Satan's greatest invention of evil. The greatest invention of evil. Now, there have been a lot of inventions, ladies and gentlemen, since the time of Adam, ladies and gentlemen. Many inventions. 
but social media is the worst invention that Satan, ladies and gentlemen, gave man knowledge to invent. Ladies and gentlemen, social media is Satan's greatest invention for evil. It has done more damage to the kingdom of heaven than any other device. More than television, more than the movie theaters, more than the music industry, <coughs> sitcoms, entertainment industry, video game industry, ladies and gentlemen, pornography industry, social media have done more destruction, more damage to the kingdom of heaven than any other device. This is Satan's greatest tool invention for evil, ladies and gentlemen. There have never been an invention that have done more destruction to the kingdom of heaven than social media. If I did not use it for ministry, I would not have it in my possession, ladies and gentlemen. I would not have social media if it was not for ministry. This is the only reason that I use social media is for ministry. Only spiritual minded people can receive what I'm saying today. Only spiritual minded. I don't expect, amen, the majority of people to hear this, that those that would hear this to receive what I'm saying. They cannot receive it. The Bible said carnal mind is not subject to the law of Elohim neither indeed can be. They can't, they can't hear this, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible tells us a natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit of Elohim, for they are foolish unto him. Neither a man can they receive them because they are spiritually discerned, ladies and gentlemen. You have to be a spiritual-minded person, amen, to receive what I'm saying. If you're earthly, if you worldly, you carnal, you cannot hear what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen. To the world, this is blasphemy, what I'm saying. Many have lost their soul through social media. Social media can bring the most diabolical, ladies and gentlemen, and evil and filth to you at a tap of a finger. Just at a tap of a finger, social media can bring the most diabolical and evil, ladies and gentlemen, and filth to you at a tap of a finger. Listen, let me show you how evil social media is. Social media, you can get the music industry, entertainment, the movie industry. You can get fashions, ladies and gentlemen. Every industry is on social media. Every um, movie industry, music industry, entertainment industry, television industry, fashion, ladies and gentlemen, the list goes on and on. Everything, ladies and gentlemen, in this world, you can bring it, ladies and gentlemen, right into your residence or wherever you might be with a tap of a finger, with a tap of a finger. That's why it's so foul. That's why it's so wicked. You can watch television on it. You can look at movies on it. You can view pornography on it. Hmm? You got chat rooms. Uh, uh, people uh, commit adultery on it, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Every evil that you can imagine is on social media. Everything, everything. Television, just television. Music industry, music is just music. Movies are just movies. But the social media bring a combination of all this filth, ladies and gentlemen, right to you at a tap of a finger. It is evil, ladies and gentlemen. There are going to be more people in hell from social media, I believe, than anything else. I, I'm, I promise you, there's going to be more people in hell 
from social media than anything else. You know, the devil really knew what he was doing when he invented social media. He used wicked men to invent TikTok and Instagram and uh, YouTube and all of these things, ladies and gentlemen. He used the enemy, amen, gave man the knowledge to, to create this stuff. What the Bible says in Daniel 12 and 4, in the last time, in the end times, what's going to happen? It says, men shall run to and fro in the earth and knowledge shall be increased. That's technology. Technology have increased, ladies and gentlemen. And social media can bring the most diabolical, evil, and filth to you at a tap of a finger, ladies and gentlemen. It's filthy. It is filthy. You must be sold out to Yahweh and have an extreme and have extreme discipline and temperance ladies and gentlemen, to have access to the social media and not fall in sin. You have to have a lot of temperance. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to have extreme discipline to have access to social media and not fall in sin. Not to fall in sin. 99% of the, the world's population cannot handle social media without sinning. They can't have, handle social media without sin. They ain't got enough temperance, self-control, ladies and gentlemen, and discipline in order to have social media, ladies and gentlemen, at their access and still please Yahweh. Just can't do it. They can't do it. You got to have extreme discipline, ladies and gentlemen. person has to have extreme discipline and self-control and temperance and rule over their spirit, ladies and gentlemen, to have access to social media and still please Yahweh. Still walk in the spirit, ladies and gentlemen. To still walk in the spirit. You must be sold out. You must be sold out to Yahweh, ladies and gentlemen, and have extreme discipline and temperance to have access to social media. Over 90% of social media is evil. Maybe even more. 90% of social media is evil. It's evil. It's a tool for evil things, for wickedness, ladies and gentlemen. It is full of temptations such as pornography, sensuality, ladies and gentlemen, full of temptations. Many men, ladies and gentlemen, never had problems with pornography, but they fell in pornography just with that phone lady, that smartphone, that computer, that computer. They was doing good until they got that computer, though, that smartphone. The, sensual, the sensuality, ladies and gentlemen, that's on social media. It is really destroying men. Women are not as ag aggressive sexually as men. Me women don't get, us, get aroused as quick as men do. And most of the filth on, on social media is women, amen, twerking. Women, amen, have clothed, ladies and gentlemen, amen, 99% naked. It's women. It's women. And it's really a tool targeted at men, ladies and gentlemen. You don't see many, it ain't men really on social media. Amen. Revealing their body parts and twerking. Amen. Trying to tempt uh, men. You don't see many men. It's women. Just whores. Prostitutes. Sluts. The low down, filthy women. Low down women with no type of morals whatsoever. All they want is views for they can get a check from YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. And they'll do anything. People do anything for a dollar bill. They'll do anything. <clears throat> Amen. For money. For Pesa. Ladies and gentlemen. They'll do anything for that almighty dollar. For that almighty Pesa. Ladies and gentlemen. Glory. And it's just filthy. It's filthy. It's, it's a filthy device. Don't you know the devil know what he was doing? Amen. When he invented that. He was targeted at people with integrity. People that or love Yahweh, 
ladies and gentlemen, people that's walking up right before Yahweh. He wanted them to be destroyed, ladies and gentlemen. He wanted them to fall from grace because Satan is so envious and jealous that you love Yahweh. Satan want you to give him homage. Satan want you to love him, not Yahweh. He wants your full attention. And he is jealous that you're giving any attention to Yahweh. He wants all your attention. And he's competing. He's competing, ladies and gentlemen, with Yahweh <coughs> to try to destroy your soul, to try to get you a man to heed to him. You know what the Bible say he's he was the most subtle beast of the field. He beguiled Eve, didn't he? He's still beguiling Eve. He's still beguiling people today. Huh? The serpent is still beguiling people today. He's beguiling them through social media. He's beguiling them. People that used to walk up right before Yahweh, I mean, was consecrated, really had a devoted, close walk with Yahweh. Social media have destroyed them. They could tell you. Most people would tell you. You ask them, what happened? What happened? You used to really love Yahweh. You used to have a prayer life. You used to fast. You used to love the word. You studied the word. What happened to you? You ask them. They say social media. I guarantee I guarantee nine out of 10 would tell you social media got me. Nine out of 10 would tell you it was the social media. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. I've been on this earth for many years and I've seen a lot of temptations, ladies and gentlemen, and I've seen a lot of evil devices, but I've never seen nothing like social media. Social media is the worst. It's the worst. If you can survive social media, ladies and gentlemen, you can survive anything. If you can get through it, if you can walk up right before Yahweh, ladies and gentlemen, and you have access to social media and you can please Yahweh, you are a blessed person. And if you don't have access to social media, you can't afford it, you can't pay for it, you don't know how blessed you are. You don't know how blessed you are, ladies and gentlemen. You know, you think of blind people. I know blind people want to see, and, and if I was blind, I would want to see. But you know, blind people are better off being blind in order to be able to see this filth that's going on in this world, see how naked these women are. Ladies and gentlemen, how these women dress, amen, and, and, and walk around here with no shame in their game. Glory to Yahweh all over the world, all over the world, amen, just showing their body parts just throwing it at men, just shaking it, amen, in any way they want to, every way you can think, they shake it to the east, to the west, the north, the south. They don't care, no mars whatsoever, ladies and gentlemen. Praise Yahweh. But the social media bring all that filth right in your lap, right in your residence, right in your home. Now, you blessed if you blind, you know, we got to, anybody can complain, but all things work together for the good to them that love Elohim, he who are called according to his purpose. Some folks, if they wasn't blind, they couldn't make heaven. Some folks, the reason why they're going to make heaven, because they blind. Because if they could see, they'll lose their soul. What all is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And some people deaf, can't hear. They blessed, don't even know how blessed they are. You don't have to hear that uh, graphic, explicit, profane music, the lyrics. You ain't got to hear it. You ain't got to hear the beat. You ain't got to hear that satanic, amen, demonic stuff. You don't even have to deal with it. Amen. Anybody can complain, but thank Yahweh that you deaf, that you ain't tempted. You ain't got to be tempted to hear that fear. We have to. We can hear. We can see. Glory to Yahweh. Praise his holy name. And we have to see this filth, filth. We have to witness this filth. And we have to hear this filth going out in the public. There's no way you can avoid it. It's, you know, unless you're a hermit, ladies, a recluse, glory to Yahweh. You have to deal with affairs and go out. Praise the name of Yahweh. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you got to deal with it. But see, Yahweh allowed these things to happen because Yahweh giving you a, a free will. He put the tree in the garden. Why? He gave Adam and Eve a free will. Yahweh didn't create no, no robots. <coughs> Yahweh didn't put no <coughs> computer chip in you and program you to live right. You got a choice. Yahweh has given us a choice to live for him or not, ladies and gentlemen. Yahweh want people, amen, with a free will. He don't want robots. He don't want a computer to worship. You can program a computer robot to worship you. But you're not a computer. You're not a robot. You have a free will. This is why Yahweh allow temptations. This is why Yahweh allow temptations to be around us, ladies and gentlemen, to test your will if you're going to live for him or not. Ladies and gentlemen, now, now, the Bible says, blessed is a man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life, James 1 and 12. The Bible tells us that Yahoshua, Mashiach, was tempted in all points as we are, yet without sin. Yahoshua was tempted, and you're going to be tempted, ladies and gentlemen, but if you're not a minister, or if you not listen to anyone preaching the word on social media, you need to get rid of that social media. You're going to cause you to lose your soul. You need to get rid of that social media. I wouldn't have social media. I wouldn't have social media, ladies and gentlemen, if I wasn't using it to preach, to get the gospel, amen, to the world. Over 90% of social media is evil. It is full of temptation, full of temptation. Pornography. You have access to pornography, amen, sensuality, uh, music videos. It's just obscene, ladies and gentlemen. Matthew 16 and 24 declares, Then said Yahoshua unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Matthew 10 and 39, Yahoshua declared, he that finds his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake and the gospel's sake shall find it. Yahoshua said, except we hate our mother, father, sister, brother, children, our own life. We can't be his disciple unless we hate Father, mother, sister, brother, children, our own life, we're not worthy of him. We're not even worthy. Worthy, ladies and gentlemen, of him. The scriptures say he that have no rule over his spirit is like a city with broken down walls. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, if you have social media, pray, pray. If you have access to social media, pray ladies and gentlemen, that Yahweh will keep you. He will keep you, that you will not uh, get off the path, that you will stay on the straight and narrow, that your eyes will not wander, that your ears, ladies and gentlemen, will not wander because your eyes are the windows to your soul. Your ears are the doors to your heart and soul, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. And as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Praise Yahweh. I know teaching like this is obsolete to 99% of the world. I know teaching like this is obsolete because you don't hear no preaching like this no more. Years ago, you used to hear preaching like this. You used to hear teaching like this years ago. When I was a boy, when I was coming up, preachers used to preach like this. They used to teach like this. And when I was a, a teenager, a young man, preachers used to teach like this. They don't do it no more. They don't do it no more. I heard them. I witnessed. I sat under them and they taught this, ladies and gentlemen. But you don't hear that no more. Most of them dead and gone. They all dead and gone. But this new generation of preachers, this new generation of preachers, they, they ain't worth a nickel. They ain't worth a bob. They ain't worth nothing, ladies and gentlemen. This new generation of preachers, they ain't worth a dime. Praise the name of Yahweh.
I know teaching like this is obsolete to 99% of the world, but that's okay. I have enough. Listen, if I don't get a view, <laughs> if no one listen to me, I have an obligation to preach the gospel. I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher, okay? Paul said, woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. Listen, anything else I have to preach to be a witness against people. If they don't hear me, I still got to preach. Ladies and gentlemen, it's because I'm delivering my soul, number one. When the, when the watchman preached and he, he warned the people, the Bible said, Ezekiel, ladies and gentlemen, uh, 33, that he is delivering his own soul. He's delivering his own So I'm delivering my soul. Number two, <coughs> preaching, ladies and gentlemen, don't mean that people are going to receive it, ladies and gentlemen. Preaching is a witness against people. When they stand on the, on, 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 uh, on judgment day, when they stand before Yahushua at the white throne judgment, they won't have no excuse. Even though they didn't receive it, Yahweh used preaching to be a witness against people, for they won't have no excuse. They won't be able to say nothing. Oh, I didn't hear that. Yeah, you're hearing it now. Even if you don't receive it, you're hearing it. And so the preacher got to preach regardless of people hearing him or not, ladies and gentlemen. See, Noah's preaching was obsolete to 99.99% to .99 of his generation also. Noah's preaching was obsolete. Only seven people heard his preaching. Huh? Only eight souls entered into the ark. Only seven people heard him. Listen, many people think that Yahweh just used preaching to reach the laws. No, 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 ladies and gentlemen, or, or, or to, to build faith in people, or to edify people, or to perfect people. No, ladies and gentlemen, preaching also is used to witness against people. Noah's preaching was just to witness against them. They had no excuse. They didn't hear Noah. Noah didn't, didn't have revival. Uh, Noah didn't reach nobody. He really didn't reach nobody. He couldn't reach nobody. He preached over 100 years. But he didn't have no, no growth. His assembly didn't grow. His assembly didn't grow. He seen the same seven people, amen, for years. The same seven people. He preached to the same seven people. And he preached to the world. He preached to them too. He was a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood, ladies and gentlemen. Noah was a preacher of righteousness, but they didn't hear it. So because Yahweh know people ain't going to hear the truth, do you think Yahweh don't want us to preach to them? We still have to preach to people even if they reject it. Because when they stand before Yahweh, they have no excuse. I didn't hear it, Yahweh. I didn't hear it, Yahweh. He's going to tell them angels, bind them hand and foot and cast them into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's what we're going to tell them. That's what we're going to tell them. So the Bible says in Matthew 24 and 14, listen, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness. Not preached in all the world that the world receive it, but for a witness, a witness. It will witness against them. The Bible says you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you to be witnesses, not necessarily that people will hear you. I would like people to hear me. I want people to receive this word. I want to see people saved. But if they don't be saved, I'm still doing my job. I'm warning the wicked from his wicked ways. I'm delivering my soul that no one's blood will be on my hand. No one's blood, no one's blood going to be on my hand because I told you. Y'all were going to say, y'all remember that? You remember that man on Facebook? You heard him. Remember that man? You didn't listen to him, though. You didn't take heed. Huh? You turned him off. Hey, Amen. You listened to him for one minute and you went on. You say, oh, I don't want to hear that. Uh, remember that man that was on YouTube? You heard him. You came across his channel on YouTube, but you didn't take heed. See, y'all, we're going to put a witness. Y'all, we're always going to put a witness in there. Noah was a witness to his generation. Noah was a witness. Ladies and gentlemen, glory to Yahweh. And as I was saying earlier, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says that Lot, when he was living 
in Sodom, the Bible said that he was vexed or grieved with the filthy conversation of the wicked. It vexed his soul from day to day, seeing and hearing the unlawful deed. Look, Lot heard, seeing, and hear. He saw and heard the unlawful, wicked, evil, unholy deeds. He was vexed, but he was a righteous man. He was vexed. Now, let me tell you something. If this music today that they play don't vex you, it's because you are the world. That's how you know. That's, that's, the, that's the proof in the pudding. That's the acid test. How you know, amen, if you are the world or not. If the world don't vex you, if this music don't vex you, if that stuff on social media don't vex you, if that filthy music don't vex you, these filthy mouth comedians don't vex you, if these filthy mouth comedians don't vex you, because you are the world. You're a part of the world. Huh? You're numb. See, you, you're numb, you're callous, your conscience been seared. But you know what? Thank Yahweh we ain't numb. I'm telling you, <clears throat> it vex me. It vex me when I see how these women dress. It vex me. It vex me, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. I don't want to see that filth. I don't want to see all that flesh. I don't want to see it, ladies and gentlemen. I don't want to see it. You know, David said this. David said, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. Now, you know, <laughs> the social media is wicked, is wicked. Huh? He said, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. It's some things on social media we shouldn't even set before our eyes. We shouldn't even behold. We shouldn't even look at, ladies and gentlemen. That stuff get in our spirit. Now, let me tell you something. Back in the day when I was coming up, preachers used to preach against television. And television wasn't near as filthy as it is today. And they preached against filth, uh, television. And it was shows like Leave It the Beaver, My Three Sons, The Brady Bunch, uh, Andy Griffin, Mayberry, Goomer Powell, stuff like that. Stuff like that, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, 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 what's happening, good time, stuff like that. The Jeffersons. Amen. That's my mama. Stuff like that. It wasn't raunchy. It wasn't no filth. It wasn't, women was dressed. They weren't showing their breasts. They weren't showing their buttocks. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to see, amen, the breasts, the nipples, the, you know, they was dressing decent. And preachers back then used to preach against that. Popeye and Seller Man, the cartoon. But this, these cartoons today, they off the chain. Beavis, Butthead, and, and the Samsons, and they tell me some other ones. Worse than the Samsons, I don't know the name of them. Don't even want to know the name, so you ain't got to tell me the name. But you know them. They're worse than the Samsons. You got Samson, that little boy on Samson, he cursing. They cursing. They cursing. I ain't never thought I'd see a day when cartoons curse. <laughs> oh my, you're, they getting your children young and younger now. And then you foolish and you let your children sit down and look at it because it's cartoons. Man, these, car these cartoons today are more sexual, more sensual. They sensual and sexual. They got themes, hidden messages, ladies and gentlemen. And these uh, 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 subliminal messages your children look, especially Disney. I will let a dog look at Disney. You can even see when Disney comes on, you see that the stars and the little, okay, it's a witch. She got the wand. That's a witch. That's witchcraft. Twinkle Bell. She's a witch. <clears throat> and then you see the stars and they fall. And them fallen angels. <laughs> Satan drew a third of the angels with his tail. Look at the stars. You see the star. And even in Disney, in the logo of Disney. You see 666 in it. Huh? And uh, these actors that start off with Disney, look what they happened to them. Um, Miley Cyrus. Look at her. Look at how wicked and evil them demons got in her. And they start off with Disney. Look how evil. That girl is, she is the epitome of evil, ladies and gentlemen. 
My goodness. Praise his name of Yahweh. But this stuff is evil. But preachers back then used to preach against television. Now, they dead and gone. But if they can see what's going on today, they be rolling around in their grave. They'll be doing somersaults in their in they coffin. Ladies and gentlemen, if they knew the filth that's going on today in our world. And let me move on. I know, I know teaching like this is obsolete to 99% of the world, but that's okay. Noah's preaching was obsolete to 99.9% .9 of his generation also. Noah just reached seven people. The Bible says in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Sometimes I, I preach, and I know my messages, they're from Yahweh, and I know some of them are so profound. And if I preached these same and taught some of these same messages 30 years ago, 20 years ago, friend, I'm telling you, people, I, oh my goodness, the response that we will receive. Listen, I can tell you in the 90s when I was, I was on a radio station in the 90s, 50,000 watt, reached all over the U.S. and some foreign countries. After one week, I was on that radio station. I'm preaching holiness. I'm preaching my heart out. You will be amazed at the letters, the phone calls. People would send offerings. I didn't even ask for offerings. They would send the offerings. This is the truth if I ever told the truth. People would send me between three to $8,000 Every month, and I ain't even asked for off. You know what? They wanted to show their appreciation that I was preaching this truth. And they love, especially them older people, they love my message. They said, we didn't hear preaching like that. Hey, Amen. I ain't heard preaching like that since I was a little girl. You remind me of my old pastor. He'd been dead and gone for 50 years, but you remind me of my old pastor. It was That was encouraging to me, ladies and gentlemen. Ephesians 5 and 6, 16 declares, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Listen, not only with, is a lot of evil on social media, but look how the devil, he, he could use utilize social media, television, all these other stuff, music, whatever, ladies and gentlemen, to take our time from us. Look at the time that people spend on social media. Look at the time that people spend listening to foolishness on social media. Look at the time that people spend behind the television. Look at the time that people spend listening to their music. Look at the time, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible say, redeeming the time because the days are evil. <clears throat> we threw away a lot of time before we knew Yahweh. We threw away a lot of our time on foolishness, friend. We just took our time and we didn't, we didn't honor our time. We didn't value our time. We didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, the worth of our time when we was out in the world. We just threw away time. But Paul said, now, after you save, after you come into the knowledge of the truth, you know Yahweh, redeem the time because the day is evil. But redeem means to buy back. Buy back the time that you lost. And the scriptures say Yahweh will restore the years that the pommel worm, the locust, the caterpillar, ladies and gentlemen, have eaten. The time we lost out in those streets acting a fool, praise Yahweh, we can redeem that time. We can get it back. Yahweh will restore all that valuable time that we lost. We must manage our time wisely Time is a precious commodity. Now, you know, let me, let me show you the, 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 the condition in the state that our world is in right now. Look at this, this state and the condition our world is in. Now, you know that I should be getting, right now, many people online listening to this message. How many people listening to me right now, live, online? Three people. Now, you know that's ridiculous? That I see, maybe more than that. That is ridiculous. That's disgusting. 
Ladies and gentlemen, all these words I'm giving, look at the interest and the enthusiasm of people today. They love us of pledges more than lovers of Elohim. They enthuse about sex. They, they, they have interest in pornography. They have interest in foolishness. They have interest in comedians, entertainment, their music, television, huh? They movies, they'll die. They'll kill you for their movies, friend. They're going to look at their movies. But look at the excitement. Look how ecstatic. Look at the interest, the enthusiasm they have for that foolishness. Look at, look at this. Look at this. If I was on here with a bikini, uh, uh, a bikini underwear on, with some swimsuits, some tight swimsuits on, showing all my body, Amen. Glory to Yahweh. Boy, them women be on here looking. They'll be on here looking. You get in, you put a bikini on and go online. Go online. Go get put a bikini on and go online and see you you you, you, you go viral. You'll go viral. But look at this. Huh? Because you know what the Bible says <clears throat> in the book of Isaiah 5 and 20. They're gonna call evil good and good evil. They're going to put forth bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. huh? They're going to call light darkness and darkness light. That's what we have, friend. See, that's their appetite. You know, monkeys like bananas. They like bananas. That's their appetite. That's their nature. You know, hogs, pigs, they like slop, filth. You get them anything. They eat anything. They eat you. They eat rat. Throw a rat out there. Dead rat. They eat rat. That's their appetite. That's their appetite. And if you give them a, a piece of cake, they don't want it. You give them, the, they don't want, they want that. Well, that's how people are. That's their nature. They, they're accustomed to eating garbage, junk food. They want garbage. And if you're giving them some clean food, you're giving them something that ain't profane, it's distasteful. To them. This, what I'm preaching, is distasteful to these people. Just like I go online on YouTube, when I talk about the black Hebrew Israelites, boy, I get views. But if I talk about any other subject, like this subject tonight, people ain't enthused. But they want to challenge me. When I'm, these black Hebrew Israelites, they want to defend their message. You know that I'm saying something, striking a chord for them to want to send all these messages to me, all these comments to me, and looking at, and giving me views. But why won't they come and hear this? <laughs> Father Yahweh, they want 10 views, 20 views, 8 views, 3 views, 2 views, in 10 days. That's, that's the condition and the state of our world. Friend. I never thought I would see this day. I'm here. The Bible says when transgressors come to their fool, amen, a man will stand up. Amen. Uh, the man of sin going to stand up. Glory to Yahweh. The Antichrist going to stand up. Friend, we getting to that place where transgressors are coming to their fool. Listen, people have no more compass, no restraints no more. Listen, uh, there's no restraints on social media. No restraints. No restraint. Now, if I get up here and I preach something true, they want to put me in Facebook jail. They want to put me in jail on, on YouTube. But you go there and you can take all your clothes off, amen, have a little tight uh, uh, swimsuit on, showing your buttocks, everything. Oh, nothing said. But a man of Yahweh preached this. Preach truth. They want them off the air. I've been, listen, how many times I've been in, in jail on YouTube? I've been in I've been in YouTube jail, oh, maybe six, seven times. I've been on Facebook jail uh, three or four times on Facebook. They put me in jail for this. Why would they put me in jail? I can't even, Moses and me, keeping me, I couldn't even get comments. People sending me comments. I can't even return comments. I can't even return the comments. Ladies and gentlemen, because they put me in jail. It's amazing. It is amazing. The shape that our world is in. 
It's amazing. Some of you listening to me right now, you know the world got you. You know the stuff you're doing. You, some of you pretenders and hypocrites. But some of you really want deliverance. Some of you really want deliverance. You fornicating. You're having sex or you ain't married. You're online and you're doing, talking stuff you shouldn't talk, sexual and central. A man, you, you, you're doing all kind of stuff. Women, y'all doing all kind of stuff. You're doing all kind of stuff. But you need, listen, you, you don't have a problem with sex. You don't have a problem with those temptations. You don't have a problem with lust until social media came. You didn't have a problem with masturbation. You didn't have a problem with masturbation. You don't know what masturbation is? Go look it up. You did not have a problem with masturbation until you began to look at social media. You used to love your wife. You used to tell her you love her. But now you don't. Social media. Social media. Huh? You used to hug her. Huh? You used to caress her. What? You don't do it no more. You never tell her you love her. You never tell her why, why, why. Social media. Your eye ain't single no more. You got something else in your eyes. Your eyes is full of darkness. You're full of darkness. There's no light now. Social media. Ladies and gentlemen, Matthew 24 and 12. I'm going to try to close this. Matthew 24 and 12. Yahushua will declare, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Do you know if I was preaching this message 25 years ago, 30 years ago, I have a thousand views right now? Live. People be on there live. I've had comments coming through. Non-stop coming. If I were preaching this 25 years to 30 years ago. That's how people have changed. No enthusiasm, no excitement, no interest of the word of Yahweh, friend. And they don't want to hear it because they're doing their sin, ladies and gentlemen, just like Adam and Eve. They hid their sin in their bosom. huh? They went and got some, some, some fig leaves and tied it around them. That's what people want. huh? They want to hide. They hid from Yahweh. They hear and put the, that's what people do. They don't want it because they hiding. They sewing some fig leaves on them and they hiding from the presence of Yahweh. I know my, my ministry, ladies and gentlemen, challenge people. I know my mm -hmm. ministry, ladies and gentlemen, cause people, praise Yahweh, amen, to feel uncomfortable. I know it. And you know what they do? They run from it. Rather than running to it, they run from it. They run from it. It can happen, but they run it from it. But one day, you're going to have to deal with it. If you don't deal with it in this life, you're going to have to deal with it in the next life. And you don't want to have to deal with your sins in the next life. The Bible says your sins will find you out. You don't want your sins to find you out in the next life when you stand before Yahweh. The Bible says some men's sins go before the judgment. Some men's sins follow after. I want my sins now to be manifest. I want my sins to be known now that I can rectify, that I can amend my way and change, friend. I don't want to wait when I stand before Yahweh, then all my sins follow me and hit me on the back while I'm standing before Yahweh and something hit me in my back. And I look behind, there's all my sins behind me and they hit me in my back, the ladies and gentlemen. But I want my sins, show me my sins now. Show me that I can, that I can repent. Deal with me. Please, Yahweh, never let me not be convicted. Yahweh, never let my conscience be seared. Father, I, I don't want a callous spirit, a callous heart, a callous conscience. Father, I want you to be able to deal with me, talk to me, show me I'm wrong. Be able to speak to me and I can hear you that I can amend and change my ways. I never want to be hardened, ladies and gentlemen. Matthew 24 and 12 says, Yahoshua declared this. I didn't declare. Yahoshua declared, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Because iniquity shall abound. Lawlessness. Lawlessness. Huh? Because people will become more lawless. Not necessarily lawless from the standpoint of obeying the traffic rules or 
or, or traffic rock laws, amen, or, or uh, ban what the 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 the, the Government say not necessarily that, but it's lawless people like that too. But we're talking about lawless, amen, pertaining to the scriptures, the word of Yahweh. They break Yahweh's laws, amen. They don't keep his laws. Yahushua said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Why call me master, master, and do not the things which I say? Now, because iniquity shall abound, lawlessness shall abound, it's going to abound worldwide. It's going to be prevalent because it's going to abound everywhere you turn. You're going to see lawlessness. Everywhere you turn, you see lawlessness. You walk down the street, look at how the women dress. That's lawlessness. Look at the men, lawlessness. Look at all the lawlessness, the clubs, the, the, the people selling drugs. Amen. The places where people party. Lawlessness. Everywhere you turn, there's lawlessness. Huh? Lawlessness. Everywhere you turn, there is lawlessness. Ladies and gentlemen. Everywhere you turn, people are rebelling against Yahweh's order. Everywhere you turn, you see rebellion. You see rebellion. Glory to Yahweh. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many, the love, let's deal with love. What is love? Love is a great interest in pleasure in something, a intense feeling of deep affections. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many, the, the interest they had for Yahweh, the pleasure they had in Yahweh, the intense feeling of deep affections they once had for Yahweh because iniquity shall abound. That's gone. The love of many shall wax, become colder. Wax, cold. They're going to get become colder, ladies and gentlemen. That's what the scripture says. Now, let me share this with you. You say you love Yahweh. You hear a lot of people say, oh, I love Yahweh. Yes, I love Yahweh. They smoke, they're on drugs, they fornicating, they're having sex, and they're not married. They say they love Yahweh. They go to the parties, they dance, huh? They lie, they cheat, they con, they scammers, but they say they love Yahweh, huh? Commit adultery, fornicate, shacked up, living with somebody they ain't even married to, but they love Yahweh, huh? They use profanity, curse, look at pornography, pornography, masturbate, but they love Yahweh. Huh? I love Yahweh. I love Yahweh. Well, let me show you the, the proof in the pudding if you love Yahweh. Let me show you the acid test. Let me show you how you know if you love Yahweh. Yahoshua said, if you love me, keep my commandments. <laughs> now, let me tell you something. If you love Yahweh, you must love his word. Because Yahweh and his word is inseparable. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Elohim, and the word was Elohim. So how can you say you love Yahweh, and you ain't enthused and excited over this? This word. How do you say you love Yahweh, but you don't love his word? You don't love this kind of preaching. Because you don't love Yahweh. You're a liar. You don't love Yahweh. You say you love Yahweh. That's just a bunch of lip service. That's just a bunch of foolishness. You do not love Yahweh. You're a liar. You do not love Yahweh. Because the proof is if you love Yahweh, you'll keep his commandments. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Why call me master, master, and do not the things which I say? You love him, huh? And you don't love his word because his word and he, him, Yahweh and his word, they're inseparable. Listen, there's three to bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. You don't love Yahweh. You're just making a lot of noise. You don't love Yahweh. Anybody can say they love Yahweh. Huh? But look at their actions. What, what do the Bible says in the book of uh, Titus 1 and 16? They profess they know me. They profess they know Yahweh. They profess they know him. But in works, they deny him. 
being abominable, disobedient unto every good work, reprobate. You say you love Yahweh, but look at your character. You're a thief, you're a liar, you're a cheater. I know pastors here in Kenya. I know pastors here in Kenya, especially Kissy. I know pastors, they liars. They are lie, they steal, they cheat, and they leading people. Fake, pretenders, hypocrites. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I have some now that owe me money. They won't, don't, won't even avoid me, won't even pick up the phone. Got churches, you hypocrites. Fake, look at the character. Bunch of hypocrites, bunch of hypocrites. Man, I am so tired and vexed of all these hypocrites and pretenders. Fakes, bunch of fakes. This one big preacher here in Kenya probably had one of the biggest church or the biggest church, Ezekiel. This man, ladies and gentlemen, just the other day, <clears throat> this situation, one pastor had these people fasting and 112 dead now. And he was tied in with them. And they went in his house, searched his house. Guess what he had in his house? Illicit drugs. He was selling drugs. He had weapons. Here in Kenya, you can't even own a weapon. <clears throat> he had weapons that someone scratched the serial numbers off. And he was in his house. And he's selling weapons. Big, big, biggest, probably the biggest pastor in Kenya. Bunch of pretenders. And all these folks, they... Uh, robbing them, taking all these folks' money. It's beautiful. These people here already suffering, they ain't got much. And then these preachers here taking all their money. You see how they ought to live. You, see, you ought to see live like a king. It's amazing. But he going to jail now. Your sins going to find you out. Bible say, be not deceived. Yahweh is not mocked. Whatsoever man sowed, that shall he also reap. You're going to reap what you sow. Everything done in secret. Everything done in darkness is going to be revealed by the light. Everything spoken in the closet. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says going to be preached on the housetop. They're going to come out. Your sin's coming out. Your sin's going to come out. Listen, people have lost interest in the word of Yahweh. They have lost interest. They're not enthused about the things of Yahweh. People are not enthused with spiritual things no more. I remember people used to be enthused. People don't pray. They don't fast. They don't pick up their Bible. They won't even read their Bibles. But they'll be online looking at foolishness all day. They'll spend hours online listening to that. Comedians. And the Bible even tells us, ladies and gentlemen, about comedians, that we shouldn't even jazz Ladies and gentlemen, or listen to foolish talk, just as joking. We shouldn't even do that. We shouldn't even listen to comedians. Well, he's a good comedian. They don't curse. They don't tell nasty stuff. They, but they, just foolishness. The Bible says foolish talk and jesting. We shouldn't partake of it. It's in the scriptures. It's in the Bible. You ever hear a preacher preach against joking? We'll post a joke. Let me find that. That's Ephesians. Let me find that. We don't even supposed to joke. We don't even supposed to do any joking. Listen to people that's joking. That's foolishness. That's clown. There's some clowns. We shouldn't get involved in that type of foolishness the Bible tells us, ladies and gentlemen. Let me read this to you in the book of Ephesians. I, I believe it's chapter number four. Look at this. Look at the Bible tells us, ladies and gentlemen. Praise his holy name. First it tells us here in Ephesians 4, and I'm going to look at verse number 25. It says, Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. And then it skip, goes down to say, ladies and gentlemen, verse 29. <clears throat> Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good, to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearer, ladies and gentlemen. This is what the Bible says. Verse 22, it says that you put off concerning 
the former conversation. The old man is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, ladies and gentlemen. Do you see that? Do you see that? Then the Bible tells us, glory to Yahweh, in the book of Ephesians, uh, I believe, yes, yeah, chapter 5. Look what it says here. Let me read it to you. Let me read it to you. Look what it says here. All y'all people believe y'all can listen to these comedians, people on the online. <laughs> you just sitting around, they doing all kind of stupid stuff and you laughing. Let me show you what the Bible say about that. It says in verse 4, Ephesians 5 and 4, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting. That's joking. They're telling jokes. Look, which are not convenient, but rather given of things. For this you know, that no whoremonger, no unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater have any inheritance in the kingdom of Mashiach. It of Elohim. We don't post to li listen to comedians. Well, he don't tell, he don't lie. He don't lie. Amen. Uh, he don't, I mean, he doesn't tell bad jokes. He don't use profanity. It's still bad, the Bible says. It's foolish talk. Ladies and gentlemen, it's foolish talk. They, they say that you, you got Christian comedians today. They call them Christian comedians. Glory, you go, they go to church and they tell jokes and everybody in the, they on the pews and on the chair just laugh. <laughs> Falling off the pews laughing, friend. It's crazy. They say laughter does good to the soul. But what kind of laughter? Laughter over foolishness? Well, let me, let me close, ladies and gentlemen. Let me close. 1 John 2 and 15 say, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You love the world. You love the stuff in this world. You know why? Because Yahweh's love ain't in you. That's why you don't like this kind of preaching. Because Yahweh's love ain't in you. That's why you don't even come to my channel. You don't love Yahweh. You love pledges. You're lovers of pledges more than lovers of Elohim. You love this world. You don't love Yahweh. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world passes away, and the lusts thereof. But they that do the will of the Father shall abide forever. Then James 4 and 4, look what James told these, these believers. They were believers. They were followers of Yahushua. But look what he told them. He said, you are adulterous and adulteress. He was talking to the men and the women in the assembly. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with Elohim? Whosoever will love this world is an enemy of Yahweh, an enemy of Elohim. Don't you know if you love this world, you're Yahweh's enemy? I know you don't want to be his enemy, do you? I'm going to close here in Revelation chapter uh, 2 and verse 5. Revelation chapter 2, ladies and gentlemen, and verse number 5. Look what it says here. Amen. Did he, uh, uh, Yahweh reproved, Yahoshua reproved the church, ladies and gentlemen, of Ephesus. Look at Revelation chapter 2, and I want to, Draw your attention to verse 4. This is the church at Ephesus. Ephesus, ladies and gentlemen. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Yahushua said, nevertheless, you, 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 you're doing good in certain areas, but there's some areas you're not doing good in. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. For I, I never want to... Leave my first love. You know how a man and a woman get married? And how the man romance his wife and tell his wife, I love you. I love you. I love you. Then after a while, he don't do it as much. Then before you know it, he ain't doing it at all. He left his first love. He left his first love. He was hot. He was hot then, ladies and gentlemen. I love you. I love you. But listen, you can still tell your wife you love her when you ain't hot no more. What about when you ain't hot? When you get cooled off? Still, you got to love her when that's real love or true commitment. You still love her. Same thing with a wife. I love you, baby. I love you when you first got married. Amen. 
Things start after a while. No more loves. Money get low. Amen. No more loves. Amen. My daughter over here just laughed. No more love. Glory to Yahweh. Look at this. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou left thy first love. Yahweh was your first love. You left it. You used to get up and pray. Now you got to, you, you, you're in that bed. People got to, amen, drag you out of the bed to get you out of the bed to pray. You used to pick up your Bible. Now it's the magazine. Now it's Facebook. Huh? Now it's TikTok. Now it's Instagram. It used to be your Bible. Your first love used to be the word of Yahweh. Huh? What happened? What happened? Look. Thou hast left thy first love. Remember. Look what he told the church at Ephesus. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art far. Remember where you used to be? We got some time. We got to go back and, and reminisce. Amen. Where we used to be. Remember how you used to love me? Remember how you used to pray? Remember how you used to fast? You have a problem fasting. You had a problem listening to the word of Yahweh. You used to love preaching. Now he preached too long. He preached too long. You used to love preaching. He preached too long. What happened? You used to say he preached too long. But now he preached too long. Nevertheless, I have some what against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first word. Go back to your first words. Remember your first love you had? Go back. Even in a marriage, sometimes we have to go back to our first love. We have to go back to the same romance. huh? We have to go back. Look at this. To our first love. Do your first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and I will remove that candlestick out of his place except thou repent. We don't want Yahweh to remove our candlestick out of our place. But I'm telling you, the, 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 the love of Yahweh have waxed cold. It's attributed to all these inventions and social media is the biggest thing. Music industry, Hollywood, Ladies and gentlemen, entertainment industry, sports industry, ladies and gentlemen, all these things have attributed to people, amen, leaving their first love, leaving their first love, leaving their first love, ladies and gentlemen. But if we repent, we ask Yahweh to forgive us and help us to go back to our love that we once had, amen, for Yahweh. Well, thank Yahweh for you. We appreciate you. Amen. Thank Yahweh for our listeners. Thank Yahweh for my, amen, uh, school. Amen. My childhood friend, Michael Moutry. On. Uh, thank Yahweh for Duncan Nesser, my son and my daughter. And if there's anyone else on, we thank Yahweh for you too. And we thank Yahweh for the people that can't not listen to this live because I know in the U.S., amen, and other places, it's during the day and people at work and they can't hear me, but they go back. And I thank Yahweh for a few people that faithful. We got some few people that go back and listen to our messages faithfully. And we thank Yahweh. Amen. Praise Yahweh for that. We thank Yahweh. Amen. Here we in Nairobi. Amen. Kenya. Thank Yahweh for the ministry, what Yahweh is doing. Also, I want my friends, if you're listening today, if you're listening to my voice now, can you do me a favor? you love me, go to my Facebook page. Amen. You have that information right there. We have that information for you. Go to my Facebook page and go to YouTube. Go to my YouTube. Amen. Go to YouTube, ladies and gentlemen, my YouTube channel, and subscribe. Can you do that for us? Amen. If you want to listen to us on YouTube, we got all our messages on YouTube. You can go ladies and gentlemen, and listen to our messages on YouTube. But we on other platforms. We in Spotify. We on so many other platforms. We trying to get this gospel out to the world, ladies and gentlemen. And you can find wherever. You can find us anytime, any time of the day. You wake up in the morning, any time. You wake up, amen, 2, 3 in the morning. You can find us What any time of the day. You can find us somewhere. We're somewhere. Amen. You can find us. And we thank Yahweh for you. And I'm so grateful for my son and daughter. I don't speak about them much 
ladies and gentlemen, but, but they've been with me for, for, for a long time, and they're so faithful. And I could not do this, what I'm doing, without their help. They are just a blessing to me and my family, and I thank Yahweh, and I know my wife appreciate them, and we love you. And I, my son, Sharon, amen, I think he comes and he listens to me when I go off the air because I don't see him on live. Uh, sometime I see him, but I haven't seen him in a while. But my son, Sharon, I thank Yahweh for him. They support us. Amen. We appreciate all of you, all of our, our friends. We thank Yahweh for each and every one of you. And may Yahweh bless you and uh, Yahweh's willing. We'll see you tomorrow. Amen. Amen. At the same time, may Yahweh continue to smile on you and bless you as our prayers.